Hey, thanks for tuning in to this episode at At Home with Adobe InDesign. And today you're gonna to be learning how to use the basic tools within Adobe InDesign CC. Hey, welcome over to my screen. Now, if you're just getting started with Adobe InDesign, that's not a problem. I'm gonna go through the basics. If you have a little bit of familiarity with Photoshop or Illustrator, just stick with me and we'll uh, cruise through these different tools. So as you see, we're starting out here with the selection tool. Now the selection tool is your basic tool to select objects or drag bounding boxes around them. All right, now let's go over and click the direct selection tool. Now what the direct selection tool helps us with is to select specific points on objects. So I come over here and I click the shape tool and I'll just create a box here. And if I click A, that's the shortcut for the direct selection tool, I can then click a corner here and manipulate this object as I see fit. Now if I click V, that indicates the selection tool on my keyboard. You can then move this object around, you can shrink it, change its size, etc. Also a cool feature is if you hit shift and then click the corner here, you can scale the object, which is really nice. All right, so next we're gonna look at the type tool. The type tool is really simple. You can either just click and drag here, and you'll create a text box and just type whatever you would like in there. Um, but really, one thing that I enjoy a lot using with the type tool in Adobe InDesign is the type on path tool. Now this is super neat, so what I can do is I can grab this pen tool here, and I can just click and drag and create this shape, and then I'll go back and I'll click on my type tool, and I'll click on the path, and now I can type along this path which is extremely useful for creating like cool Christmas cards or uh, magazine covers, etc. Um, so that's just a really nice object. And then if you want to get rid of the stroke, you would just have it highlighted and you come over here to your swatches panel and you would just click stroke and turn to none. So the stroke is helpful when you're creating it, but then once you're done creating it, obviously you do not want that stroke there. So that's how we remove the stroke. All right, next we'll be looking at the line tool, which is a fairly simple tool. You simply create a line. Now, and if you want to straight, create an exact straight line, you can hold shift and drag across, or hold shift and drag down. And that'll make sure you have a completely 100% vertical or horizontal line. Vertical or horizontal. I think you can also do 90 degrees. Yep, you can also do 90, which is really cool. Or, excuse me, 45. So, very nifty tool, and you do that by holding shift. All right, now to the pen tool, as we just used a minute ago to create um, our text tool. So we click here on the pen tool, and you can click a point, come up here, click and drag your pen tool, and that will create these different shapes, which is really nice. And then, of course, if you want to add a stroke to that, you just would come over here, and you could change the color. I could come up here, and I could change the width of the stroke. Um, and then if this option isn't available, you're going to go to Window, Stroke, and um, you have all your stroke options over here in your pa uh, options panels, which is really handy. All right, so also one thing that's very helpful with the pen tool, let's create another path real quick, is the Convert Direction Point Tool. Now this is nice because what happens is you're going to get a point that... For instance, you have a couple points here, and you want to even out the points between. So this is like, really, I want this to be a nice rounded circle. So I grab this tool here, which is my Convert Direction tool, and I can just click, and it will make it to where I can evenly distribute the anchors, which is really nice. All right, so I have that there, but then say I want to manipulate this one specifically. I can hit A, or select the Direct Selection tool, then come over here and I can just pull this one out and that one stays the same, which is really nice. Also another cool feature about the Convert Directions Point Tool is I can change just this one. So I can come over to this anchor and I can pull that down or up and that allows me to create a unique shape. And then if I want to add or subtract anchor points, I can delete this anchor point here or I can come over here and I can add an anchor point which is super nice. And then 
the hitting A on the keyboard, I can hit the direct selection tool and move that around. All right, so now for the pencil tool. This is where we recreate our own freehand lines. That's really not smooth though. So how do I smooth out that? Well, I go and I select the smooth tool, which is super nice, and I can just drag along here, and that will smooth out my line. Smooth it out as we go through here. And that just creates, and what it'll do is actually pull away some of the points, add points, and just start to create a smoother line for me. So I want to come over here and I want to smooth out that turn. So as you see, it's just making it to where I don't have these really sketchy, bumpy lines. Uh, but you can come in and manipulate these with the direct selection tool and the convert directions path tool, which we just showed you a minute ago. So I'm going to delete that now. All right, now we're gonna look at the shape tool. So what's cool about the shape tool is there is three different options for the shape tool. And when you have each one selected, um, you can go and you can just click within your document and you can set the exact size that you want. Say I want 5.5 by 5.5 and there we go. There's the exact size of the shape that I have. And also once the shape is created, if you look up here in the top left, you can alter exact dimensions up here in the top left, which is very handy. All right, now let's go and we'll create a different shape. This time we're gonna create a polygon. And I can actually select the number of points I want, or the number of sides, excuse me, of the polygon and the exact size I would like. That creates a whole lot of sizes. And then what I can do is of course manipulate as I so choose by hitting A on my keyboard or come up and hit the direct selection tool. I can just make this all wacky. All right, so the placeholder tool. Now, when you're laying out documents, this is very helpful because say I want to make sure I want to have exact number of pictures right here across the top. And again, if you forgot, I'm just holding shift. And what that does is it allows me to create an exact square, which is really nice. I don't have to guess, I don't have any guesswork. So now I've created my picture arrangement. And then all I do is come back and I can place images. And of course, we place images by coming to File, Place. And I would place images into my layout. So these are just placeholder boxes. And as you can see, you have the same options as you had for the regular shapes. You have ellipses, polygons, and rectangles. All right, now the scissor tool. This is a very odd tool, I must admit, I do not use it. But what it allows you to do is come in here and splice up shapes to make a little bit of Swiss cheese, which is always tasty. So now we got some Swiss cheese puzzle action going on here. So that's the scissor tool. It just allows you to manipulate shapes and it does a lot of really funky things. I personally don't use it, but if you want, there it is. The scale tool, all right. So we're going to create a 5 by 5 and now we're going to select the scale tool. And what this allows us to do is just move our object around according to this point. Now if I take this point and I move it here, now it scales according to there, which is very strange, but that's how the scale tool works. So I can move this point around and now when I go and I click, it scales according to that specific point. So that way, you know, if you're like, why is my object scaling really weird? Well, you just take this point and you can drag it up into the corner and then that would allow you to scale more directly into that corner. I usually do this just by manipulating the handles with the regular selection tool. Um, it's f fairly simple to do so. Um, but the scale tool is an option to you if you would like to use it. All right, now that we have a nice solid square here, we're gonna fill this with some color. Coming over here to our swatches panel I'll click no stroke and none and then I'll put a blue fill on here and I'm going to come over to the gradient tool and all I do is I click on the side here and drag across and then what that does is it creates a scale it will automatically do a gray scale if you use the normal gradient tool but if we come over here and we use the gradient feather tool we should be able to scale whatever color we would like. Let's give this a go. 
And then that scales that for us. All right, so in order to understand that this indeed is a gradient fill, that this is not fading to white, I'm gonna get this pink. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control, end bracket, and drop it behind. And as you can see, it is a transparent gradient. Our shapes now. All right, now the hand tool. Click that, and we'll just move our, our artboard around. And actually, a quick hack to this, you can just grab the space bar, and it gives you the hand tool, and you just move it around. Super simple. And the same thing with the zoom tool. You just hit Z, and this is a super useful tool. And you can drag and size up, uh, which is super handy. And then all I do is hit Control-0, and I can zero out to the full width of the document. Or I can hit Control plus or minus, and I'm on a Windows format right now. If you're on a Mac, it'll be Command. Uh, and that will allow you to zoom in, zoom out, zero out, and then you grab the Z, and you can zoom in on specific areas that you're looking to manipulate or work on in your document. All right, and lastly, the eyedropper tool. I really enjoy this tool uh, because say I have this box here and this box here. This box is filled with a blue color, and this box right now just has a stroke on it. Well, I want this box to look like this blue box. So all I will do is I'll take the eyedropper tool with that box selected, and I'll click in here. And it immediately changes my uh, shapes over to what was clicked on. One way that this is a super nifty tool is if you have an image and you really like the color in that image, um, we'll just create a pretend image. Let's say this is an image of multiple boxes. And so we have these multiple boxes and we really like the red in this box. But I want to add it. So what I would do is I would take my eyedropper tool and I would click here. And as you see, it adds the color that we are looking for. And I would just drag this down into here and I could add it into my swatches panel. All right, well, thanks for tuning in today on this episode of Learning the Basics of Adobe InDesign. Check out the full playlist to get any tutorials that you need to make sure that you are covered on all your InDesign necessities. We'll see you on the next episode of Working with Adobe InDesign at Home. <laughs>